morning y'all i was going to do this live but then i realized there is a lot of logistics involved in that and like my husband not being able to do what he needs to do considering especially that it's sunday morning happy sunday y'all hope y'all are going to church we certainly are but we're going to the second service so we have a little time this morning um i'm walking really slowly right now so that i can focus on an intro and then we'll get started so the main reason why I'm doing this video is that I know when it comes to an exercise routine for me, I always want someone to do it with me. And fortunately, I was gifted with a very athletic, fit, in shape husband. Unfortunately, what that means is he doesn't need to lose weight and he can eat however he wants and not exercise and stay the exact same size and fitness level. And we only have one treadmill, and I hate getting dressed to go out in public. Getting dressed, you know, just the top half for this video was bad enough. You best believe I'm not modest. I may cut that out. That's a little weird. You don't need to know that. Sorry. I'm, like, wearing pants. I'm wearing pajama pants, okay? <laughs> it's not as weird as it sounds. Um, but I wanted to do this, basically, so that... If you are like me and you have problems exercising, or even if you're not exercising, let's say you're doing a task that you need to do. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move it up because this is just I'm on level two and it's excruciatingly slow. Okay, what why isn't this working? Enter. Oh, well, that explains it. I wasn't on two. I was on point five. <laughs> Whoops. So anyways, the point of this video is that I want to keep you company while you exercise or maybe while you fold some laundry or whatever, do some important tasks together. And I want to keep myself accountable to getting 30 minutes of exercise a day. That's good for prenatal care. And um, I started this pregnancy obese. Yes, I'm fat. I'm sure you couldn't tell by looking at me. So that definitely increases some of my risks in pregnancy and it can make, as pregnancy goes along, it a lot more uncomfortable than say if I had started the pregnancy at a normal weight or a healthy BMI. So that's my problem. It's something I'm working on. I will say that with my hypothyroidism, my weight, like I put on weight so fast and I don't even have to change anything. If I miss my pill for a couple of days, my Synthroid, it's just awful. So, and actually after I had had Esther, before I had Esther, look, y'all who know me in person know this story, but those who don't, um, when I was in high school, I think my top weight was like, 200 pounds and I was like 5'5 five five or something and over the course of about a year and a half there's about maybe two years I lost over 60 pounds and I got down to I think my lowest weight at one point was 133.4 I remember that day distinctly on the scale it was the lowest I ever remembered being and I felt amazing like Number one, I felt good, I felt attractive, um, and I had so much energy, and I wasn't embarrassed every time we did something physical, like, what's gonna jiggle, what's gonna happen, and am I gonna be so embarrassingly out of breath or red in the face, and it was amazing, going shopping was amazing, everything fit me, everything looked good on me, it was great, I got to live on the fun side for a while. And I kept the weight off fairly easily. Like, I wasn't working at it. I wasn't obsessive about it. I just sort of maintained a slightly reduced diet. I didn't exercise as much anymore. Although, for a while, on and off, I would get into exercise routines. But, at the end of the day, I kept it off for about two years. And then, when Matt and I got engaged and I got closer to our wedding, I was balancing wedding planning, working a job, going to school full time and maintaining my weight and my plate was full. I was super overwhelmed 
And so one of those things had to drop. And I remember talking to my sister and literally telling her at the time, like, I'm just not going to worry about my weight as much anymore. I put on a couple of pounds due to stress, but I'm not going to stress about that either. I'm just going to let what happens, happens. Well, that was a terrible idea because 15 pounds turned into 30 pounds. And then after I got pregnant, I, because I started out overweight, so my pre-pregnancy weight with Esther was 184. And so I decided I didn't ever want to get above my highest weight again. So I told myself, because I was already overweight, you don't have to gain as much weight in pregnancy, that I was only going to gain 16 pounds. And I gained exactly that. I remember the day that my water broke. We didn't know this at the time. I had an OBGYN appointment just to check up because I was 38 weeks and they weighed me and it weighed exactly 200 and I remember like gulping but also feeling pretty good like 38 weeks you've only gained 16 pounds feeling pretty good and so anyways went into labor gave birth and I lost the weight like that I was I believe five pounds below my pre-pregnancy weight like two weeks after giving birth just through nursing I wasn't exercising um, I was eating, I mean, not junk, but I was eating till I was full. You know, I was told over and over again to maintain your milk supply. You have to eat, eat, eat. So I was eating when I was hungry, and it wasn't like just baby carrots and kale. You know, it was ramen and TV dinners. It was what I had time to prepare with a newborn. And so, anyways, <clears throat> I um, lost my train of thought. It's kind of hard to talk continuously while you're talking. <sighs> Anyways, I um Oh. So, what happened after that was I got quarantined or rather we heard about COVID. We were really super worried about getting locked down, just the two of us in Indiana. Because I don't know if you guys remember in the beginning of lockdown, like I'm talking in the midst of the toilet paper hand sanitizer craze. You know, we were being told that the world might end, like the economy might crash. It might be that post-apocalyptic dystopian survival novel that you dreamed of happening in middle school, but as an adult with a new baby, you're like, what was I thinking? <laughs> Instead of saying, like, I'm sure I'd be one of the ones to survive. Instead, you're like, no, <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> and so, you know, that's adulthood. So, um, we rush to, um, sorry I say um so much. It's also part of catching my breath. I'm not in great shape, as I've mentioned. We rush to go down to Georgia where most of my extended family was. My sister and my brother-in-law asked us, told us we could stay with them basically until lockdown was over, which of course ended up resulting in us moving down here permanently. When Matt's job let him know they wouldn't be able to give him the hours he needed and we couldn't pay our bills on those kind of hours. So essentially he was kind of let go, but sort of like not. Um, and we ended up moving down here, eventually going back up and getting the rest of our stuff. Cause literally, the night before they imposed the um, like no crossing straight line state lines for non-essential travel we literally left that like the night before like we left at like 6 p.m. and drove through the night with a newborn and we got there fell asleep and by like 9 a.m. when we woke up the next day we had heard that um, Indiana had imposed that travel ban which looking back now Everything seemed so solid and set in stone. The police weren't gonna stop us if we wanted to leave, but whatever. We felt glad that we were <coughs> where we were at. Let me get some water. <sighs> Talking while you're walking, it makes your throat so dry. That looks good. If I were a real fitness guru, I would have, you know, a fancy water bottle. But I don't. I have a red solo cup. 
So ultimately, once we got back, my sister, we were all joking like, permanent vacation. If you guys have ever watched Rhett and Link's video about um, everything's okay, we're on vacation at the end, they say permanent vacation when they get fired from their jobs and they're zombies and none of that's important. So we were sort of like eating like it was vacation. My sister was cooking these amazing meals all the time and I'm not blaming her. It's entirely on my eating habits, but we were eating like we were on vacation and soon enough, I gained, um, I gained all of my pre, my like lost pregnancy weight back and then some, and then I ran out of my Synthroid for a little while and because we're down here, we don't have insurance in this state or whatever. It's complicated. And we don't have, um, I don't have a doctor, so I had to just try and find an old bottle of Synthroid that I had until I could go to the doctor. And I was out for like a month. And I put on a lot of weight. Like, I think the last time I weighed myself, I was literally, it's hard to say out loud, but reality is good. We've got to work with what we're dealing with here. You guys are keeping me accountable. The internet can yell at me and motivate me and encourage me. Last time I weighed myself, I was 225 pounds. That's right. So that means that I gained 25, math, 75 is 25, 50 pounds since moving down here. Cause I was, yeah, no, no, 179. Hold on. I was 179 when I got down here and now I'm 225. So that is 21 plus 25 is 46 pounds. Lord, let that be right. <laughs> so anyway, all that being said, I had definitely wanted to lose some weight before getting pregnant. Um, I know that my recovery with Esther was just like a breeze. I mean, as relatively as it can be, you know. But uh, in my third trimester with Esther, because everyone was telling me, you're a first time mom, you're gonna be overdue, you're gonna have to be induced. And at the time, I was trying to go all natural and trying to go with the Adam epidural and have an unmedicated birth. I was terrified of being induced. Because as everyone knows, Pitocin is the devil. Like, when it comes to going unmedicated, I know some people have done it, kudos to you, but I was scared. The internet scared me. And anyway, so I had started one of the things that I had learned um, through my internet searching and paranoia is that um, exercise and staying active and moving around will help baby come out when they're supposed to. So basically the entire last half of the first trimester, I was working 30 minutes a day every day, but like hardcore. Because at first it just started as walking around the neighborhood, but then as I built more stamina and I built more muscle, I was doing more and more and we had this little gym in our apartment. It's no big deal. Every spare second I was on my pregnancy yoga ball thing, just moving around, getting things going. I wanted baby in my pelvis. I wanted them descended and I did not want them to be comfortable because I certainly wasn't comfortable. So anyways, it like, according to my doctor, it was 38 weeks, but because I was tracking ovulation so closely using the fertility awareness method, I knew that I was actually like 38 weeks and four days. So like 38 and a half weeks. And she actually always measured exactly four days ahead. And they were just like, huh, but they never changed the date. And I was like, yeah, yeah. So I don't go by the LMP doctors. Um, unless, of course, you don't know your conception date, then it's a pretty, it's a pretty good estimate, I have to say. My conception date, my L, I mean, I don't know my conception date this time. So my LMP is gonna have to do. Um, but anyways, I'm fat. <laughs> I'm fat now. I was then, but less fat. And I tell you what, 46 pounds, I feel it. I feel it, my clothes, they feel it, or rather they don't because I can't wear them anymore. Um, so it's not good. 
when I see pictures of myself from the back, I'm literally like, who's that fat lady? Oh, oh, that can't be me. And I'm not fat shaming anyone else. I know in this culture of body positivity and denying reality, we don't like the bad word of fat. And no one can acknowledge that they are fat without making other people who may feel overweight or actually be overweight feel bad. If you say you're a fat, now remember, I was, I've been fat for a long time. Someone who would be like a size medium is like, yes, I've gained so much weight, I'm so fat. And I remember thinking, if they think they're fat, what do they think of me? They must think I'm the size of a barge. <laughs> anyway, I don't think you're the size of a barge. I do think if you're overweight and you're not happy with your body, do something about it. Do it before you gain another 46 pounds because that's discouraged and you're pregnant. So your weight loss capabilities are highly hindered. Um, anyway, that has been a long rambling story. Let's recenter. I want to exercise for 30 minutes daily every day and I want accountability for it. So I thought I was going to do this as a live. You guys tell me in the comments if you would prefer it as a live. I didn't want to start it as a live video because I was like, A, I want my husband to be able to move around. B, at first Esther was asleep so I couldn't be as loud. C, what if like the camera fell and revealed my indecent pajama pants and I couldn't edit it out. And there were a couple of other reasons. But ultimately, you tell me what you guys think. Um, if you would prefer it to be a live or you can just join in and actually do it live and then of course I'll just you know, upload it later. That's fine by me. I'm just gonna do this first one and sort of test it out. But my goal, I am going to exercise. Um, it seems like a lot to say every day. It seems like a lot. It seems like too much commitment. I don't know. I don't know about that kind of commitment. I don't, I think it's time to take that step. So, I'm going to do 30 minutes every day. I'm going to film it, and I'm going to post it. Now, I'll still be doing a regular video on Saturdays, so essentially what this means is that on Saturdays you'll be getting two videos. One, sometime in the early afternoon, because I'm gonna be exercising in the morning, but by the time I get it up, it may be some other time. Um, hey, so. Man, I'm so out of shape. <laughs> oh, anyways, I just thought it could sort of like, you know, during COVID, some gyms are not open. The weather is inclement weather, poor Texas. And, you know, people, it's just so hard. Like, I have this treadmill in my room and just staring at it every day. Oh, awful. It's just judging me silently there every day standing resolute while I watch my goals just pass me by so anyway but I remembered when I was living with Shauna and Jeremy which was super fun by the way they let us live with them for a long time of course eventually we paid rent and it was super awesome I mean if it weren't for the space constraints as far as like she's having a baby we're having another baby which we didn't know like when we moved out but the timing was sure perfect um, it just, it was awesome. And one of my favorite parts of it was that basically, unless Shauna was at work, I always had company doing whatever I, like, task I didn't want to do. If I wanted to clean my room, someone was with me. If we wanted to go on a walk, of course, we eventually stopped doing this because it got really sketchy without the guys there. There was a weird incident with a truck stopping. I'll tell you about that sometime. But, um, we used to go walking together and... Literally through our chatting and stuff, it would, like, an hour would, or 45 minutes would pass by, and we wouldn't even notice. And we're going up and down all these hills, so we're getting varying exercise out in the hot Georgia air. And so I just realized that maybe something like this could be a substitute, I guess, an online substitute at a time when you may not have company to walk with you while you walk on the treadmill or 
fold your laundry or do your dishes or whatever. And it might be nice to just have someone who, hey, understands like not wanting to go alone to the grocery store or whatever. Might look a little weird if you're watching this at the grocery store, but I don't know. So anyway, and of course it does the double whammy on my end of keeping me accountable for exercising every day or at least having a really good excuse <laughs> for not posting a video. So that's my spiel. It only took me 20 minutes to get it out in its entirety with all my rabbit trails. So, what are you up to today? Are you guys, are you guys doing any exercise? If you guys are watching this, mind you, while doing anything, tell me about it. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you're working on. Post your accomplishments, even if you didn't finish it, in the comments so I can congratulate you and encourage you. Um, because laundry is hard. Look, y'all, I am not a great housewife. In the sense, I try, I try. But in the sense that, especially like older women, seem to have stores of knowledge and energy and motivation that like I don't have and I would love to have that and I know that it's probably something that I should have learned at some point in childhood and I didn't and now it's my adult responsibility to learn it now and maybe some people just pick it up through like their examples but I don't I did excuse me so you know if you guys would be interested I would love to maybe do some interviews with like ladies that I know that are particularly good at various elements or all elements of housekeeping, people who are good at co cooking, cleaning, organization, etc. And do sort of like an interview style and ask them like what they learned and when they, if they can remember learning it or if it was just something that they saw done and picked it up. Because I'm just curious where People like get this knowledge and this like headspace that I don't have. And it's made me a lot more willing instead of just bemoaning what I don't have. I've been watching a channel called Victory with Sheldon and Leah. They are our married couple friends back from Indy and they recently started a YouTube channel and it is already like amazing. They need a lot more attention than they're getting. so. If you're watching this and you're subscribed to me and you like this kind of content and you're wanting to be like inspired and motivated and get some actual tools to become a better person and you know become a person of excellence go check them out if I remember I'll put their link in the description or like a link to their channel or just the name of their channel um, but I've been watching all their videos and it's made me realize like instead of just being sad about the fact that I didn't get that magical, magical because I'm sure it's not, power to like wake up in the morning and clean and then cook all day and then clean again and be nice to people. Like I can do all that, but I am so grumpy about it. And I think that I should earn a Nobel Prize for doing any of that. And you know, I probably shouldn't. I'm a stay at home mom. It's my job. Like my husband, we're a very traditional family, obviously. I'm a Christian mom life over here. Christian's in the name, so you have to imagine some traditional gender norms probably go along with that. You know, my husband, he works long hours to pay every single one of my bills. I'm living life for free. I'm living rent free. My phone is paid for, everything. So, my, my side of the deal is that I do all the housework stuff that he doesn't have time to do because he's gone all day. And of course I care for Esther, which we decided to do because number one, I hate working a traditional job. There's a couple that I've liked over the years, but I hate it. It's awful. I, my personality just chafes at structure and being forced to do things, which is probably good for me. I'm so glad I had the jobs that I did while I did. Um, 
But, you know, I care for the baby, which as far as child care, like, I don't have a degree, so any job that I could get is going to be, like, maximum $12 an hour. And as far as child care, it's basically, I mean, I would just be, every bit of money I made would be going into child care. So let's just cut out the middleman. I'll watch the baby for free. Um, and, of course, I love being home with Esther. I can't imagine her you know, being watched at like a daycare or anything. So for us, it made more financial sense for me to stay home. And um, <clears throat> now, if I made more money, then that might be different. But either way, my side of things is that I keep the house from at least falling apart. Matthew, he's amazing. He does not have high standards. He helps me, especially now that I'm pregnant, so much with stuff like he went and got groceries last night that's supposed to be my job and I was just feeling so sick so my parents took Esther he went to the grocery store and I got a couple of hours to rest and not have to worry about anything and that was amazing he's just he's awesome um, he's totally picked up the slack of like the first trimester woes um, but yeah, I just, I want to get better at my side of the job. You know, he does his job excellently. He brings home the bacon. He, you know, is beloved at work. He works hard. And then he comes home and he helps me like ideal husband. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Except you can't try him. He's mine. But for me, I think my rating as like a stay-at-home mom, as far as childcare, I think I would get a lovely 9 or even 9.5. I watch her. I do. I change her diapers. I play with her. Oh, yeah. I feed her. I love on her. I put her to sleep in her naps. She's on a great sleep schedule. All of that's, that's going good. I'm growing another baby, so there's that as far as the growing another human. That's in my favor. But as far as the cleaning and the cooking, which I love to cook, the problem with cooking is that you have to um, go to the grocery store and get groceries. You have to have some form of a recipe, even if you don't follow it strictly. You have to have ideas. And then you have to clean the dishes. I hate dishes. I don't know which I hate worse, dishes or laundry. But the point is, also, we don't have a washer and dryer right now, so we're taking our laundry over to our parents or my sister or wherever till we can get a washer and dryer. So, we're coming up on our 30 minutes here. I'll talk about that more sometime later. But if you guys would be interested in the interviews that I described, like, if maybe you didn't learn a lot of those basic skills growing up on as far as, like, cleaning and stuff, then let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in that. And specifically, maybe, like, which area. You know, maybe you're like, I mostly hate laundry because I don't really know how to do it. You know? Like, by the way... I still don't know how much soap to put in there. I just I just change it up every once in a while, just in case. You know, sometimes I put it to the two level, sometimes to the four, sometimes to the three. You just, <laughs> I just guess, and I have no idea. I don't know how you're even supposed to know. I mean, I know the larger the load, the more soap, that makes sense. Anyway. <clears throat> largely unedited I might cut out like the one minute spot where I just sat there and went in eh, for like a minute and a half but other than that I don't think this is gonna get very much editing I don't think I'm gonna put any background music or anything because I have my license free jazz music 2020 playing in the background so yeah I don't know what do you think do you think this works better in a live format or do you think that's weird I don't know Anyway, that's why I'm trying to do the clean with me's. I just think it would be cool to like get on YouTube and try and be a better person and be accountable to my channel and maybe encourage someone else to try something new as well and then, you know, be able to look back, let's say one day, the goal is that some of this stuff comes more effortlessly to me or I don't hate it as much or I have better ways of doing it and to be able to look back you know, even when I'm 30 and look at my early 20s when I only had one kid and one on the way, 
But it would be nice to sort of look back and say, huh, that's what I was struggling with. And, you know, because we'll be having new problems then. So, anyways, if you've come this far, if you've watched this video, I first want to congratulate you on whatever it is that you are doing, whether it be productive or no. If you are resting, good for you. Sunday is a day of rest. And if you are exercising along with me, if you're folding some laundry, if you're doing some dishes, keep going. That's going to be worthwhile in the end. And um, should I stop walking while I do the clothes? Because I've hit my 30 minutes. But should I stop? I think I should stop. Stop. Okay. So this thing says that I burned 109 calories and that I walked 0.9 of a mile. So that's pretty cool. I think if I hadn't been walking that excruciating 0.5 miles in the beginning, then <laughs> I probably would have made that full mile. Woo, a 30 minute mile. So um, anyway, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If this kind of content interests you or if you wanna tune in to the daily uploads of me exercising, feel free to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, say so in the comments down below and I'll make sure to get down there and thank you personally. I'm hoping to reach 200 subscribers by the end of this month, which is February, the year of our Lord, 2021. So I hope you enjoyed. Get out there and do whatever it is you've been meaning to do but putting off. You procrastinator, you. <laughs> Preaching to myself here. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you enjoy the guys.